folks, I'm Shane Rooney, also known as the Peaky Blogger. I'm joined here by Dean Hegarty and Rona McNally, horse trainer, uh, for a, a bit of a Christmas preview, basically. Um, th- obviously, this is going up for Christmas Eve, so we'll be basically looking through Boxing Day. And as well as that, we'll be getting the insight into one of Ireland's, I suppose, up, up and co- coming owner trainers um, over the past. Well, definitely this year, anyway, he's come to light more so than anything else, but... Ronan, look, thanks very much for taking the time out and coming on the show. No problem at all. Uh, glad we're with you. Yeah, that's it. I suppose, look, we may as well crack on with the interview anyway and get things started. Dean, do you want to kick it off? Um, can do, yeah. Um, Ronan, I love it really when, you know, one of our small yards, like yourself, you know, you only have a handful of horses. They're all in your own colours. Like, I like to see small yards like that doing really well. But is there any plans in the future for yourself to maybe expand the wee bit and get a few extra horses in or a few syndicates or anything? I know, I know Tubbs has been looking for Dave Petey. <laughs> either <laughs> easily, but has there been any word on that even? No, no, no word on JP. Uh, Tubbs offered him the jam man as well when he won at uh, Newton Abbott last year. And then he's offered him the real deal again, but no word yet. Uh, so we'll just we'll live in hope. Uh, look, I wouldn't rule out expanding a, a small bit, but I'm definitely not into uh, trying to fill the yard full of numbers uh, just to pay to get training fees. I, I can't ever see myself doing that. You know, I, I, I would be sort of happy enough maybe to take a few more numbers if the right horses came along and uh, concentrate on quality rather than quantity. So mm-hmm. uh, that's probably what it would I have. It lots of offers. Look, I'd say. Could have probably had 40 or 50 horses there over the last few months and uh, it just wasn't uh, just wasn't right. Just uh, I, I don't want to rush into just taking a pile of horses for the sake of it, you know. So we just see how things pan out. There's, there's no rush. I'm, I'm sort of enjoying what I'm doing. There's no pressure uh, either way. So uh, if just things fall right, uh, maybe to expand at, at a certain time, sure, we'll look into that, you know. Yeah, definitely. And um, just on one of your horses there, the real deal, like, you know, there's been a lot made of them this year, like, and, and I don't really care what bookies say or whatever, like, but, you know, do you think personally that people should be talking more about the improvement that that horse has shown rather than what the bookies have maybe moved a, a horse overnight, like? For sure, look, certainly uh, it would be nice if, if people had to just come out and say, look, at Ronan done a brilliant job training him. Uh, the horse obviously had problems or issues and uh, he's found the key to him and he's went on and look at the improvement he's shown but sometimes in racing people dwell on the negatives and uh, they look into gambling and betting and uh, now the latest thing in in racing seems to be doping and I think in racing everyone's dwelling all the negatives instead of focusing on on the positives with a great sport with great people uh, they have a great follow and look at your po- uh, concentrate on, on the positives instead of always looking for the negative spin. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, the real deal, I bought him for plenty of money. He was bought to be a nice horse. He was handicapped at his handicap mark from last November, December. So it wasn't as if I was waiting a year to all of a sudden unleash him to win yeah. off the same mark that he had a year ago. So if people probably put things in context and just say, well, obviously, look, at he was maybe a big raw horse. Ronan's yard at Aspergillis was made... It was made known around the time of Cheltenham, so there's no point putting two and two together and getting 22. Like, you know, you might as well yeah. just say, Look, what, finally we found the key, great training performance, well done, Ronan. Let's move on and, and look at something else, you know what I mean? But uh, that's that's just how I felt about it. I was a wee bit sickened with the whole thing, but uh, at least he's been on to be to be a nice horse or something to look forward to. The handicapper has him rated to be sort of probably at the moment one of the, the best novices in, in Ireland. Uh, obviously, he has to still improve that and improve, but uh, it's exciting to have him. And sure, look, at I'm looking for the positives and looking to the future now, so I'm not really worried about what's went on in the past. Yeah, and like you know, uh, another t- touching on another thing, you had a 16 year you trained a 16 year old horse last year to want a race in Rods Common. Like, so I think people should have been looking at it and the quality that you can bring about improving a horse no matter what age or no matter what the layoff. You know, as you say, you, it was known that your horses were sick. So, like, you know, yeah. get the horse back and fitness, they go on and won another two races after that, then it's a good performance. 
Yeah, we brought Trigger back there. He was sick as well last year, but they all were sick. But he came back and an 11 year old winning five in a row and, and winning at the, the Galway Festival. Sure, there wasn't too much made of that achievement either. So, uh, if you put the whole thing in contact, the Jam Man came back from a dismal run, the Derail Deal came to win five in a row, the Trigger came to win five in a row. So, uh, look, at, it's not rocket science. Like, obviously, there was an issue with the horses and yeah. uh. Maybe we should have just looked at that and have a lot of reviews to go and, and face now with the turf club. And I think probably with the evidence that I have produced, I, I don't think I really should have to face really any of the reviews. But that's just the way racing seems to be at the minute. There, there seems to be a cynical side to uh, Everyone looks at the cynical side of racing instead of looking at the positive side. So uh, it's just one of those things in racing. And actually, look, at what we all have to deal with. So just all have to move on and, and go forward. And hopefully over the next uh, year or so, I'll just prove that, yes, uh, we can train horses here and, and uh, we can do just as well as most people if we've got the right ammunition. Yeah. And was it yourself last year, Ronan, in um, England, or was it maybe another trainer who, who kept getting questioned every time they brought one over? Uh, it, was, it was me with a jam man. So it was, uh, yeah. there was just, a, again, there was one of these, look at, night before, 20 to ones, and then the next morning, all of a sudden, there it's weighing in price and, uh the, the, the whole media then talks about this Barney Curly gamble and all these things. So again, uh, I was I was pulled into the stewards three or four times that day, and I was interviewed and at the races, and and the horse the horse had won off like can't even remember it was it was a lowly mark yeah. over over like, compared to what he is now, but he was only winning off the same uh, chase mark that he had already won over hurdles. So it wasn't as if he was well handicapped over fences or there was any big uh, scam or anything going on. He had already won the year before at Southern off the same mark over hurdles and he'd won off the same mark over fences. So, you know, it wouldn't have been a rapid scientist to, to say the horse was capable of winning that race yeah. at Southern that day. So uh, again, the media put this big spin on it again. So yeah, just look at uh, Look, at we're all probably getting used to that there now. Philip Kirkby over in England there had a horse. Uh, can't just think of his name now. Uh, he's won three or four there now, and again there was a whole media storm over that. But obviously oh, okay. that horse is that horse has had problems. Uh, something bushy or something bushy park. Uh, yeah. So that that horse. The horses aren't robots. When you get them there, you maybe buy them to be good. They can have problems. They can have stomach ulcers. They can get sore shins. They can have uh, sore hocks. They can have all sorts of problems. And the trainer, a good trainer finds out what the problems are, gets them back to farm uh, and goes on and hopefully wins races. So in my opinion, he's done a brilliant job in what he's done. He's got the horse to go on and win. He's placed it brilliantly. And again, the media then is a whole backlash and there's there's a, an owner's form or a gambler's form or something looking to investigate him and all these sorts of things. So let the man alone, tell him well done and, and go on ahead. The owners have spent a lot of money and uh, the jockey's done well, the trainer's done well. So let's go and enjoy it instead of sort of pulling the man down. Exactly. The, uh, all, all I was saying there was just about, you know, the Irish train horses going over at the moment. Like, you know, they're, they're, every horse is going to be back. Like, you know, especially people ju- ju- like, you know, jumping on board. It doesn't take much to move a market these days, I wouldn't imagine. So I think there'd be more made of it than there should be. Yeah, look, I agree. Nearly every horse I run uh, seems to be always as a move the night before and then they're back that morning and then some of them drift and some of them keep at their price. You know what I mean? It's, it's very, It seems very random. So I sort of give up uh, paying attention to the market there when it comes to my horses again because it's, it's unbelievable the moves for some of them. They probably look at easy cash. I don't own them now. I've sold them, but very, very middling horse there. And every time he ran, he's backed into favourites. So he was like, it, it was scandalous. Like he, he was no good. Uh, we give him every chance. And, and look, at, we certainly won't back him into favourite every time yeah. because he, he, he was very, very middling. And sure, that's the same as nearly happened to all my horses there, but it always then comes as if it's this big massive gamble and sort of, you know, you've been handicapping and you've been doing this and all, and it's, it's never the case. Nah. Right, Shane, over to you. Yeah, look, I suppose I just want to touch on the fact there as well, like the, the Ronan rightly put up, like it is, I suppose, the media to do focus more on the, on the moving market, basically, than the actual quality of the horse. Like you look at the likes of, I'm just, Picking off the top of my head, they're like the likes of ITV racing with Matt Chapman and Ryan then from RT racing. Like every time before the off, you'd always see them and oh, the market market's moving this way or the market's moving that way. Or if there's a, a heavy punt on, there's oh, there's big 
I suppose, excitement or anything like that. And then if there's a drift, they're, they're up in arms about it as well. So, like, it, it certainly it certainly goes to show, like, that it's it's more worth, it's worth more time, I suppose, looking into the actual quality of the horse rather than who's backing it or who's not, basically. But, um, yeah, I suppose, look at Ronan, my first question to you is, I suppose, how did it all... How did it all start for you? And I suppose where where did it where did it I suppose start off? Like did you, did you move into a yard that, that was already set up, or did you I suppose start from scratch? Uh, I started from scratch. Uh, I was uh, riding a few horses for Brian Dugan, and uh, once we got CW, uh, we trained uh, CW out of Brian's yard, and I uh, stayed there for a few years, and uh, sort of progressed on to. Uh, well, at John Woods is actually before that. I had a wee filly there and she ran twice from me there. I got a half share for free. She had won on her second start. And then I bought a, a horse called Final Target. He was a 15-year-old to win a hunt race and actually won the hunt race. Maybe 20 lengths, 25 lengths with, with him. He was 15. And then CW was my next uh, my next horse. And so it all snowballed from him. He, he had massive success uh, for a cheap horse. And uh, I suppose uh, I got the bug when, when I was training him and, and having good success with him. So uh, it's just snowballed from there really. And, and year on year, we're probably getting more and more success. Yeah. And that's it. Like, look at obviously the jam man put in a great performance there this year in particular, like winning the Tritown and winning it fairly com- comfortably as well. Uh, but I suppose as a, as a trainer, say that owns his own horses, like was that the biggest, the biggest thrill on the racetrack for you, or was there anything, I suppose that that really caught the eye, basically. Ah, uh, look at uh, when the try time was massive. Uh, it's hard to explain the emotion after to sort of maybe shock more than anything. Uh, we did think we could win it. We weren't massively confident because obviously you were taking on 12 of Gordon Elliott's and you were taking on Henry de Bromhead and all the rest. But uh, we were fairly confident if he could jump round, he uh, he had a massive chance off his handicap mark. Look, that was a brilliant day. But I don't dwell too much in the big races and, and, and the big prize money and stuff. I, I get as big a kick out of, say, Bob Elford winning around Sedgefield one day, things like that there. Uh, you know, any of my horses there that win in, in, in places there just we, we get a great kick out of it. And usually the two boys are with me and, and it's a family thing. So we just enjoy uh, we enjoy all, all those sorts of things. Yeah, definitely. And look, at we, we just touched on it there like that you do own I, at least at least 99% of the horses in your yard, if not all of them. But when you're... When you're buying horses, say for yourself, is there any particular qualities that you look for? Like, is there a a particular bloodline, or is it form, or is it looks? Like, what what's the main thing that really catches your eye when buying horses? Uh, so far, what I've been doing is sort of I've been buying horses that have been recommended uh, to me by usually Kieran Fantasy, and. Uh, Look up with it all sorts of shapes and sizes, and uh, just uh, look at it. If he tells me one's fairly good, he has never steered me the wrong way yet. So uh, I all sort of take his recommendation and we we'll go with that. And we've had massive success. He he recommended a buy the real deal. He recommended a buy Valen East, uh, the Jam Man, CW, the Bob Elephant. So the list goes on. So he's been uh, he's been very good to me so far. So. Uh, it's 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 a winning formula and, and we're sort of sticking to it. Uh, I have been to the sales and I bought a, a nice uh, store three year old. Uh, he was actually called Baby Tubbs and uh, I thought he was going to be very good. Uh, I, I actually thought he was good as the jam man. The two of them worked together. They were work partners and uh, unfortunately he was killed. He, he fell into a drain in a field. And uh, but I just went. I bought him in Lux. His pedigree. He had no pedigree. Just bought him on, on looks and uh, size and scope, but generally look at it. Just go with what Kieran sort of recommends, and at the minute uh, that's working for us. Yeah, I was sure. Look at when it's when it's working, and when you're you're definitely getting plenty of winners anyway. It's better not change it. But um, for I suppose people that are looking to follow in your footsteps, like you've obviously set the bar for owner trainer. Um, say setups basically is there any particular advice you'd give to I suppose say the younger generation that might want to go down that route and might want to train their own horses basically uh, look it's, it's, it's doable uh, so it is I've held a job down the whole time trained away 
what I will say it is a lot of hard work, but most people involved in horses are hard workers anyway, so it's very achievable. Uh, you just need a wee bit of luck on the way, get the right horse to start off with, sort of get a bit of hunger and passion for it, work hard at it, and uh, hopefully the winners will come and uh, the whole thing can just grow from there. But look, at I, I would uh, I would encourage anyone that's, that's young and interested in racing to, to get a horse and come on and try it. You know, it, it's definitely achievable. There's, there's loads of small trainers out there doing really well, banging in plenty of winners and uh, enjoying it. It's, it's a great passion and a, and a great part of life. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, look, that's basically all I have. Um, Ronan, if if you wish to care to stick stick along for the the Boxing Day preview, you're more than welcome. But yeah, Dean, no bother. Dean, definitely. Um, there's plenty of great racing on. Say for for our side of things, like the punting perspective. Um, I'm just basically going to run through the whole list of cards. Say for the big races. Say between Kempton, Leperstown, Limerick, and I think there's one in Weatherby as well. But definitely say we'll go to Kempton first, obviously, for the King George meeting. The first race I'm going to be looking at here is the Cotter Star Novices Chase. And personally speaking, the big breakaway at 11 to 4 looks to be the value bet of the day. Um, it's a super jumper, absolutely loves three miles. It should run a very, very big race here. I know there's a Nichols horse in here that's definitely an interesting sort. But I suppose look at the worries are that he is he he idles like a complete dog, so he does at the best of times. Um, but I think I suppose if he jumps like he did in Cheltenham and he 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 runs, I suppose with a bit more improvement and I suppose less arrogance basically to to just pull himself up, he should be well capable of winning a race of this particular nature. Yeah. What do you think, Dean? Um, it's a tight race. I haven't really looked much on that. Like, but I definitely think the big breakaway, the, the drop back and trip the last day, the two mile three for two mile four didn't help him. He was just picked off late. Like, but um, yeah, I suppose he's he's a good enough chance there. Is that off the cap puts and Gelton horse probably make it a good race, but yeah, no, I th- should be good enough. Yeah, Sean Blue is obviously the main danger there at fifteen to eight, but I just don't think. I, I think personally, if the big breakaway jumps like he did in Cheltenham, he should be able to, I suppose, make a bit of a, a definite race of it. Like, and he is the better value of the two. Is there anything really wrong in the you you seen or did you look at anything or? I will, the big breakaway I just you mentioned the jump at Cheltenham. Look, it was phenomenal to watch. A uh, great, great jumper. But I would really worry about Colin Tizard's farm. He's uh, really, really struggling. Look at. If you were a man into laying, you'd be laying his favourites in the big races that are going over the last couple of months. Horses are just not seeing out their races. They're not finishing off. They've been very, very disappointed. I think he had a big winner now, fairly big winner last weekend, which was positive. Uh, Harry Cobden rode. Uh, yeah. He was he was rode aggressively on the day, which uh, probably all con his odds this year are sort of been rode patiently. But uh, I would probably take uh, the proven horse if the cap fits. He's uh, way ahead in ratings. He's a proven Grade One hurdler, and uh, he was beat by him the last day. It was probably be a bit disappointing. But if he get a, got everything together on the day, I would probably say he's the safest option uh, at a big price, nine to two. Uh, I just couldn't be taking con his odds horses at the minute, but. If it had been in form, I probably would have went with a big, uh, big great away. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I suppose we're not going to spend too much time in the Christmas hurdle. Epiton should be winning this hands and heels. There's no doubt about it. Like, she is a special breed of a horse. Just seeing her the last day, like, just moving effortlessly past the field and just absolutely hosing up. Is she a sure thing for the champion hurdle again this year in Cheltenham? She surely has to be. Well, you, you thought that we talked about it the last day and you, and you were a Goshen fan, but I think that's changed since. <laughs> yeah, definitely has been changed. All right. I don't think we'll be seeing Goshen winning a, a champion hurdle for quite some time now. But, um, I rule it yeah, out. Lookers. huh? I wouldn't rule it out. You never know. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, obviously, look at with the bleed, I know Ronan would be better talking about this situation more than me but the way I was sort of looking at it like there was three possibilities the wind obviously look at a wind up is a 50-50 sort of redemption basically it, it can either work or it, or it doesn't but 
the bleed, I don't know how long really that that would take. It depends really, I suppose, how bad of a bleed it was and how far gone it's gone, basically. Um, look, I, I think definitely for this year, his, his chance is gone. I don't think he'll be winning any any champion hurdle with the form, I suppose, with, with Epitant anyway. But it, it, he was just sort of one that I caught my eye there for like an anti-post bet, say, down the line. Like, he's the only sort of a horse that has the pace to really match Epitant, if that makes any sense. He, like, the, the champion hurdle field has been fairly weak for the past number of years now, uh, since the likes of the Hurricane Flies and everything else like that. But Epitant, she's definitely a league of her own now at this stage. And I just thought that Goshen might be one of an improver to maybe take her on. I don't know, but I certainly think, look, at she, she's a sure thing anyway. She should be now at this stage anyway. Uh, moving on into the King George, <sighs> Clandis Obo, surname, I'm a big surname fan, lads, I'm going to go with surname, I definitely think if he jumps like he did the last day and if he, if he gets back going the way he is, look at, I know Clandis Obo is going for three in a row, but I just can't look past the, the best rated chaser in training, I think there's, look, there's, he, he definitely, the track definitely, sh- might and suit him and everything is probably going against him but I'm going to stick with I suppose a horse that I love and I absolutely love surname yeah I, it's in my opinion I think it's a two horse race and it's between yeah. the two of them yeah definitely I was I was very much tied between the two of them I don't think obviously look at Mona Lee was set to go over obviously that's changed now with the new restrictions in place surname definitely has it all to do. It, it it has more question marks over surnames head than Clandon's Oboe's head. Obviously, we talked about it there a few weeks ago. The di- different trainers, I suppose, target different races, say for for different horses. And obviously, look at Clandon's Oboe is, is a King George horse that Nichols Nichols targets with him. But I think nine to four for the the biggest rate or the the best rated chaser in training, like is. is is great value for money, in my personal opinion, anyway. Uh, Ronan, did you have a look at the King George yet, or is there anything that's, I, I suppose, catching your eye? I, I actually would. Uh, obviously, Clown is always been there. Don has got the T-shirt. He's the obvious one. Uh, I would probably give, I'd be in your camp, I'd give Surname another chance. Uh, I just thought he looked a more complete horse this year. He didn't uh, hang. He, he settled. He, he sort of looked uh, more professional and uh, he grew up a wee bit. Uh, I thought Clan de Zobo got a probably a hard enough race at head up the last day. It was a real battle. So it was the whole way up the straight and, and he, he had to get hit behind the saddle a good few times. And uh, just, I was there with a the jam on. The ground was absolutely horrific that day. So it was so. I just say that could probably have left maybe. It wouldn't have been an ideal first run of the season. I know Nichols always leaves them fairly straight. Uh, but I just think that could maybe take the edge off Clans, De Zobo, and uh, I think uh, Surname maybe could get his revenge this year. So he could. Yeah, hopefully. Anyway, I am absolutely praying that he does because I just, I love the way he jumps and I love the way, looking back, say, from last year to this year, the improvement he's shown and the way he's just settled and just, the, the horse he's become has just been absolutely unbelievable. It's it's been night and day. Um I haven't really looked at anything else in, in Kempton Dean the Jews spot anything that's under the clouds. I, I kinda just stuck, stuck to Ireland that pretend number. Yeah, well, I'm sort of the same with that as well. Uh moving on then to Leperstown, we're definitely gonna have a great look at this one. The Night Frank Juvenile Hurdle. Um Gordon Elliott has a an odds on favourite in here. But I'm going to go with um, Willie Mullins' the charge here. Had door at 7-1. to one. Certainly looks to be a very interesting one. Obviously, look at it. It's a French AQPS winner. Uh, obviously, similar enough profile to the likes of Undeso. Um, It's got serious bloodline there, like ranging from winners from one mile, one mile, one furlong to three miles. Uh, Rachel Blackmore is a great jockey to be boarding on. And um, obviously, look at it, it looks certainly like the stable's first choice anyway. And I definitely think it could be ones to it could be one to take on, say, definitely at an each way at an each way price for Elliot's odds on favourite here. But don't be surprised to see an upset here. 
Uh, Dean, did you see anything there that I suppose takes your fancy? Well, is there any... We we spoke about it just before we came on. I think Gardner is going to have a quick fire double in that fifteen minutes. He's got that Zana here there, and uh, he's got one on Lamrick just before that, and uh, that's in the twelve forty seven. Plondaw secret. Now, if you look at the form of that Plondaw secret, it's point to point one. He beat Champagne Gold, who's come out and done all right for Henry de Bromhead. Don Boyne, who finished second to Bob Bollinger, the other day at Navin. Manella Escape. Is in there as well, so he's kind of he's done he's done well in his point to point, and I, I think Elliot will have a quick fire double there. But on the back to the one on Leopardstown, I mind watching the on the or the road to Cheltenham with uh, Ruby Walsh and Larry Hislop, and they they did on the sectional time, you know, on the, the three races, the three hurdles races that day at Ferry House, and Zana here was quicker. By a good bit, but the way he was hurdling, he was hurdling superb. Like, and I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he could go on and even want to tell them as well. Yeah, certainly, definitely. Look at it. Obviously, Gordon Elliott has a has an unbeaten man in this particular race, but I don't know. I just think that there's better each way of value there than taking on an odds on shot here. I just think that it might be, I suppose, a safer bet than. I suppose lump it in and a and a shot that could be a little bit exposed. Ronan, did you see anything there that I suppose takes your fancy? Uh, it's not too exciting, but I would say Santa here of Elliot. Say just uh, I actually watched that race live, and it was one of those performances where you said, "Wow, I was really really taken by." It. Uh, I know Ruby Walsh on the day was very taken by it as well. It was just the way the manner in which. He uh, he went away from the opposition uh, that day. Hurdled really well. I think he he actually was a wee bit wide. He was on the outside, sprinted clear, and uh, just screamed off of a really talented horse. So I would stick in that camp till I see uh, see otherwise. Yeah, uh, sure. Look, there, there's definitely no harm in that anyway. I suppose I was just looking for a bit of value there. Uh, moving on then to the race and post novices chase. Uh, this one here holds my nap of the day. Felix Deji. I definitely think at eleven to eight is a sure, sure thing. Uh, looking, looking at the card, it's it's a fairly beatable field. I think. Um, I suppose it, it can be held up or can, or it can make the running. He was a bit of a lunatic last year, but he definitely seems to have settled a little bit more. I think he's as sound as a pound in a recession, boys. I think he's definitely a sure thing. Um, Dean, did you see it in there? That, that I suppose maybe take him on. I I like Blackpool. For the simple fact is, as as we talked again on another episode, that um, novices chase Navin, Willie Mullins always starts his good horses. At. I go to that meeting every year, and yeah. he starts some of his best horses at that. Now, Blackbow has won at Leopard's Time before as well. I just think there's something different about him this year. You know, I know yeah. he's kind of had his troubles over hurdles and that, but he took that day in Navin, he took to them them fences really well like, and 72 is pretty good like Darvish Tires in there as well now he, he came third in the champion early like, you can't be ruling him out uh, Franco de Port won well the last time out and Buttered has been thereabouts but uh, I think Blackpool could be pretty handy this year for, for Wally yeah that's it as well I I suppose look at I'm I don't really trust back in Blackpool basically simply because of he was just a complete nuisance last year like he'd find any way to beat himself um, obviously the form looking into it with Felix Deji he's beaten uh, Darva Star very very easily the last day I think it was in was it in Fairy House or Punchestown Punchestown it was um, he he won, he bet him by something like 20 odd lengths so for a horse to be even close to even money for that is serious value, I think. Like for I think Darver Star is like third favourite, like. So really he only has to beat the likes of Blackball. Look at Franco de Port, I, I said he was impressive last day in Perlis, but realistically, like like that was a pretty weak feel. Like he should have been beating them doing handstands anyway, like. But um I definitely think Felix Deji, like he just has the bit of pace. He's turned out to be a fairly decent jumper, he's fairly sound. And I definitely think he should take all the beating. Ronan, do you have any thoughts on that? Or 
Is there anything yeah, that's catching your eye? Probably be thinking Felix De- Felix Deji as well. Uh, quite a simple horse. He can make his own running. He could get an easy lead, dictate things, do his own thing. Uh, he actually beat Armon in, in April 19 uh, in a grade one over hurdles. Uh, and look at that form. It's turned out to be Armon uh, won the Galway hurdle and looked to be a really uh, a, a really solid champion hurdle hope this year. So uh, the jam man uh, and the real deal actually raced against Felix, Felix Deji in a qualified riders maiden flat race at Navin this year. And he absolutely blew the field apart. He made the run and no one was even able to go with him. And uh he, he looks a superstar, so I, I just think uh, he's probably the only looks the only front runner in it. Jack would probably get an easy lead. He'd be able to fill him up wherever he wants, and he's obviously loads of pace from winning on the flat and being a Grade One hurdler. So it's probably his to lose. Uh, Black Bow, I could see stepping up and trip as the year goes on. And although he, he, he won a couple of nice bumpers, I could see him being a stand chaser for the future. So I don't think he'll have the pace of Felix, Felix Deji. And at, at those prices, I agree with you, Daphne. He, he's the one probably to, to be on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I suppose, look, at just a, a few that really caught my eye then for the rest of the meeting. Uh, Alan King rides take all. Alan King is obviously a great friend of mine through working with Stephen Mahan. Um, I want to wish him the very best of luck. He's currently priced around seven to one. He won very, very easily for his first winner on the track um, last time out in Cork. Obviously, I think Dean, I meant I mentioned to you just to have a couple of quid each way. We were fairly happy that particular day. Uh, but he's got up fourteen pounds for that. I don't think that's going to be enough to stop him. Alan was as still as you could get um, riding him that particular day, and I definitely think he has loads more improvement in him. Uh, moving on then, the rest of the card, uh, the 12.30, I particularly like El Barra at 5-4. to four. 250 is going to be my next best of the day. Camino at 14-1 to one is absolutely a ridiculous price. Dean, you put it up on the page there earlier on, I think it was last week or the week before. Um, it drifted out like a barge in Dundalk, but it, it stayed on very, very well that particular day. I think that was a fitness run, and I think that they're... They were aiming for this particular race, and Paul Nolan definitely likes to get his winners around Leper Sound at Christmas. Uh, three twenty-five. Then Collins um, for Joseph O'Brien. I think uh, Tom Hamilton is riding it there in the bumper. This is a particular race that this trainer uh, targets. He's won it in twenty sixteen and twenty nineteen. Uh, I think Hamilton was on board both of those occasions that particular day. I think he's priced around seven to two, so that's definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, Dean, did you spot it in there? To that's I suppose worth mentioning a little bit, or is there anything at all that's catching your eye? No, as I said, my probably my bet that that day will be that double at Elliot Doubles. I think that could be pretty handy. Then, then too, as I said, that Santa here looks pretty handy, and and the other ones got good form and pointy points. Like, and if he brings that to the table, then surely should be a good enough day. Yeah, definitely. And Ronan, did you? I suppose look uh, at flip. probably there in the one forty at uh, Leverstown, uh, Paddy Turley has a a horse called Mig Italian run. This uh, fourteen sixteen to one. Uh, yeah. He has done really well with it. It's went up the handicap rightly. Won an Alvis uh, hurdle at Musselburgh the last day. Uh, Paddy's a shrewd trainer. He's doing really well at the moment. So I would love to see the horse go on and. Uh, get placed if not win and uh, I do think he's a nice horse I've seen him running plenty he hurdles well he travels he's a good traveller and he uh, probably for handicap I, I think the boys uh, like a bit of good ground in Leopard's Town is probably the only place in Ireland you get good ground at this time of year so I would say he's set up for a good run and it would be great for the stable Paddy's just took out his, his licence there uh, maybe a month or two months ago and uh, it would be great if he could get a, a, a winner on a big card like Leopard's Town on, on Boxing Day so Fingers crossed for him. And the other one I would probably have a few quid on would be Willie's in the bumper. Uh, it's out of a half-sister to Cousin Vinny. And uh, Willie's bumper horses are on fire at the minute. And you can be sure he's going to unleash one of his best ones for Boxing Day at Leopardstown. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. Bet, um, I like that one there you're on about there running as well. And the, and the, uh, that Eugene Turley's horse. That actually, that, we actually were talking about that, Shane, the last time my Dan, young Danny McMenamin rode it over in Musselburgh. As well, yeah. So, I think I would like to see that one, one going well as well. Oh, definitely. Look at it. it's, it's definitely nice to see. I suppose new trainers basically breaking onto the scene. Um, and look at Mig the Tyon has definitely been a bit of a revelation for uh, Turley there this year. 
Uh, moving on into Limerick, lads. Uh, the Fahi Novice Chase. I personally like JP's horse in this one, John Deal at six to one. Um, it won very, very easily in Nace last month. Uh, it was 13 and a quarter lengths ahead of Espanito Bello, Bello for Barry um, Connell, who has since gone out to win by about 20 lengths the last day in Nace. Um, Asterian for Lange, personally speaking, needs to jump a hell of a lot better. He's prone to jumping very, very, I suppose, harshly, basically. He's, he's just... He's just a hard horse to, to to get over the big jumps, basically, in my personal opinion. And um, I think John Deal is is a bit bit more bit more sounder over the jumps than he could, I suppose, potentially trouble a Syrian for Lange if there's any mistakes. Um, is there anything that's Dean that, that you like that's catching the catching the eye maybe to take um, a Syrian for Lange on? Pence of all Ed, really. You know, it's yeah. on the grade two last time out. And like <laughs> his form speaks for himself. He seems to take take him well to the chase fences. Like, um, I know if I'm not mistaken, didn't Elliot won that last year with Sam Crow? No, uh no. Fahim Bech, Fahim Fahim beat him, Bech didn't Sam he? Crow, yeah. 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 So like I don't know, it's interesting that Paul Townsend goes to Limerick. Yeah, you know, so th- that might mean that they fancy a stay in for longs, but no, nah, I, I would, I like pencil fall there. Yeah, certainly. Look at I, I suppose I'm just going basically by the Limerick connection with JP as well. It might be one for his his Christmas pocket, but yeah, well, I Mark Walsh, a- Mark Walsh goes to Limerick instead of Leopardstown, so it could be yeah, something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I think JP is going to have a great day in Limerick. Um. Ronan, do you like Anton there in that particular race? Uh, I think probably any one of the top three or four could win that. I wouldn't have really, I wouldn't be a batting race for me, but I do think it's interesting that Paul goes to Limerick. Uh, if he thought that the JP horse uh, was much better than Auster- Austerian Fallon, he would have went to uh, Leopardstown, you would have imagined. So it's interesting there that Mark and Paul have both went to, to Limerick. Uh, so I would probably stay out of that race there, to be honest. I think uh, Abitante and a few of them other ones are, are for sure propositions. Yeah, definitely. It looks, it, it's a tricky enough race to call. It was, it was, I suppose, look at last year, it was between the, the top two, obviously, Faheen and Sam Crow. And I was actually lucky enough to be on Faheen that particular day. But um, yeah, definitely this year, like it's just, the, it's just up in the air. Like we don't really know what it's going to be like. Um, moving on then I suppose to the, the rest of the card 12-15 Palm Beach at 4-6 to six, I definitely think it's going to win at a canter it's going to be possibly it, it certainly looks like JP or Joseph O'Brien's um, triumph, or, triumph horse for the year uh, 157 then I particularly like presenting Megan at 12-1 to one. I definitely think it's great each way of value and 307, then I'm going to take a bit of a chance here now with my former boss's horse. Uh Balbir de Matan is 16 to 1. It's a poor enough race, but I know look at Steven's been in poor enough form, but um it's a course, it's a course and distance winner. And look at there might be a bit of a spanner in the works and a 16 to 1. I'd be I'd be willing to have maybe a euro each way or a couple of euro each way just for interest sake more so than anything else. Dean, do you like Enton or is there anything that's catching your eye? No, I, I literally the only one I looked at in that race was the or that card was the, the big one. I kind of stay away from yeah, the, the rest. Definitely. But it, it's just interesting there, as Ronan as well noted that you know Paul goes to Limerick because Wally has micromanaged the 8 to 11 favourite in the first race at Leopardstown. He's got El Barra, the 5 to 4 favourite, in the second race. And he has got nothing there. Blackbow. And I think that's about it. At yeah, the head, is it, the head of the market. So, you know, it could be interesting that, it, that he goes there. Is El Barra running in Limerick or Leperstown? Leperstown. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I got that right. So <laughs> I was wondering there when you, when you said El Barra, I thought he might be running in Limerick. I might have got my notes mixed up, but. No. no, look at definitely it's 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 interesting, all right. And then moving on to Weatherby, I didn't really look too much into it there. There's a great three handicap chase. 
and the 205 I personally think Windsor Avenue at 9 to 1 is great each way of value uh, it was pulled up last time out in Shelton Bowls in much Cameron Waters here and um, look at it it could be it could be interesting at a price there's a, a few quid knocking around for it but look at that could be absolutely anything at all but I think it's certainly got a good run in him and the, the ground should definitely be be coming into its favour Um Dean, you probably didn't look at it at all, did you? Or... No, I was just looking at it here now. I, I, I think <laughs> I, Alan King's horse could have a good, or I know he's favourite, like he's already a few points there, like that Canelo. I think he could take a bit of whacking on that. Yeah, definitely. It's it, it's a nice it's a nice little competitive handicap, all right. Ronan, did you see anything there that that's sort of uh, interesting? I never really looked much at Weatherby, to be honest. Uh, I just probably looked at that grade three handicap, and I think it's uh, it's a lottery, so I, I wouldn't be touching probably anything at uh, Weatherby on on Boxing Day. Yeah, definitely. It looks it looks a tricky enough one. Um, I suppose Dean, will we go on to the giveaway now? I suppose I may as well, yeah. Yeah, well, to look at um, obviously, as many people know, we we sort of fund this podcast by patron. Um, obviously, myself, Ryan, and Dean. Ryan isn't with us there today, but uh, we come up with literally daily tips and try and put in as much studying as we as we we basically can uh, to try and get good value winners. Uh, we're something like. Uh, 40 odd pints in profit for one pint level stakes Dean isn't that right something yeah. in along them lines anyway but um, yeah we, we decided for Christmas that we we're going to give a, a giveaway here of uh, is, is it a 20, 20 quid free bet or is it a, a one for all free bet is it a, a 20 euro bet credit or whatever they want 20 euro yeah. cash or credit or whatever yeah well sure look at sure that's that's basically it, like 12 20 euro basically to do what you want of it. So I have I have a bowl here anyway with all the names down for the pitch. I'll, 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 I'll sponsor that another bit if you want, boys. No, what we might do, Ronan, is we had Sean Flanagan on the last time as well and, and we just got a, a char- we, we got a charity bet, really. Yeah. Uh, if you, if, uh, we, we, we stick, the, we stick the, 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 or the money up for the charity bet if you want to a hard for a yeah. charity bet. I'll, 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 ch- I'll chip into that as well, yeah. Yeah, good man, Ronan. That's very good. But, um, yeah, sure, look, I may as well crack on anyway. And sure, we'll, we'll have one name here now. I don't know who it is, but um, I've it all fairly compacted up here now, so I don't know who it is. Tom Bo. Tom, well done. You're the winner of the the 20 quid. Just so show that up there, Shane. Yeah, hold on there now. I don't know whether you'll see it or not. The lightning here is fairly poor, but um, yeah, I think that's... I, I don't think you'll be able to see it, basically. But Tom, um, I, I hope people will, will take my word for it anyway. Tom Bowes, after winning the, the 20 quid, uh, you can message the page or message us on Patreon, whatever you want to do to get in contact. But um, other than that, basically, that's about it. Ronan, is there a particular horse, say, out of your yard that you're particularly excited coming up into 2021? Or uh, you liking the look of Enton in particular? I could suppose, look, at the, the exciting one, the unknown quantity is probably the real deal. Uh, he could fall into un- the anything category, so we're just hoping that he does progress and he is as good as the handicapper certainly thinks. And hopefully that, that we certainly think so he's probably the one to look forward to and, and he could end up anywhere uh, he'd probably end up definitely running the grade one somewhere along the way anyway and sure look at if he was good enough uh, sure we can start dreaming of, of bigger and better things but uh, he, he's the one to, to keep an eye on for the for the year ahead yeah definitely look at it, it and I want to wish you the very best luck as well it's great to see restricted trainers like yourself doing so well I think we, we've seen over the last I think five seasons we were just looking it up. Your, I think for runners to winners, you're you're going off something like fourteen percent of the strike rate. Like so, that is absolutely serious for someone that only has a handful of horses basically, and they're all his own. Like so, look at credit where credit is due. Like you're definitely you're definitely mixing with one of the big boys. Anyways, it's it's great to see. Well, I we actually, that. Shane. I actually not that I was looking, but I just noticed in the recent post there one day that. Uh, I'm sitting fourth in the owners' title in Ireland, and uh, the only ones, the only ones ahead of me are, are uh, 
uh, Gigginstown, uh, JP McManus and Rob Corps. And sure, I'm only walking <laughs> around the heart. I'm only walking around the yard every morning looking at five horses. So it's, uh, it's, it's funny to even, to even be sort of sitting at that list in number four. Like, but uh, it's good. It's exciting. Look at, we've invested in a few younger horses as well. So we're plenty to look forward to. And look at, we're enjoying it. It's, it's, a, it's a good thrill for the whole family. And a, a lot of my friends come down are involved as well. They come down there and mornings off and they come down at the weekends. And sure, look at, uh, it's a bit of crack. It's, it's a bit of crack for us. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, obviously, Lucas. Um, when we're talking about Patreon there for the for the giveaway, if people want to sign up, um, it's ten euro a month. Basically, what you're getting for that is is every day you're going to get three minds thinking of, I suppose the the easiest way to make money for the people that are kind enough to to give up their their hard earned cash to, I suppose to help us get to where we need to be basically um obviously look at the there's there, there's there's plenty of happy happy followers and all that and we are in profit and people are after making a, a nice bit of bit of money with this with the certain bets that we've seen um but we leave a link in the description below look at it, it, it you're basically not only paying for the tips but you're paying to help us i suppose expand and go on to bigger and better things and like this giveaway here we will be organizing every so often the the giveaways of of money so like you're not going to be you're not going to be done out of a hard deal basically we're trying to we're trying to be there for the punter's perspective more so than anything else and trying to get more people involved in racing and interested in racing basically uh dean do you have anything to add to that or is there anything ah. i've missed out no, I think you're spot on. Like, but as as just another thing, like we do whenever we have a, like say, a trainer or a jockey come on, like we like to do a charity bet and the charity yeah. process. We like to give, hopefully, the one and we like to pass it on to the Cancer Trials Ireland. You know, kind of give back a little something to yeah a racing connected charity outside of you know injured jockeys fund or whatever like that. There, so yeah. hopefully. I can get another wee charity bet and a one on one this time we'll get it on the donate all the proceeds on then to Counter Trials Ireland. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. That's what we're all about. And look at well, Shane, I'll put up I'll put up three hundred pounds there for one of you to pick a, a a charity bet, but it's a good cause there. And sure look at it'd be exciting there if you can uh, land the winner and it'll go to a good cause. So if you want to get your heads together and pick something for over Christmas and Get it up on the site there. That that'll be exciting. Jesus, yeah, Jesus. Ronan, look at, thanks very much for that. It's 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 great to it it's it not only is it great to have the likes of you coming on, but to have say support like that coming in is just absolutely unbelievable. Like, um, I'm nearly a bit lost for words after that. I wasn't I wasn't expecting that that much amount of, of money to go on, but. Jesus, like that's that's absolutely brilliant. Like, and hopefully we'll be able to get a nice winner there as well to to give to the likes of the cancer trials. Obviously, with the likes of Pat Smolin and everything else like that, um, it'd be great to give something back into the people that are especially working hard, say through these times and everything else like that. But yeah, I'm I'm a bit lost for words after that, Ronan. Thank you so so much. Yeah. No Definitely, problem, it's good to give something back as well. Thank, thanks yeah. very much. Like that, as I say, as I say, as I say it's like it's kind of lost our world. We should be thanking you and, and trying to, you know, give you a, a, a couple of pounds or something for taking an hour out of your yeah. evening to help us out. Oh, like, and here's you doing something like that. Like, so no, thanks very much now, definitely. Yeah, definitely. All all credit, all credit and credits deserve definitely. Your, your, it, it's, it's a great kind gesture, all right. But um, I think basically, Dean, is there anything else to cover or can we finish up? No, we'll finish up. You want to do an outro and then we'll kind of finish off. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, well, folks, obviously, look, at that's been a great episode. Thanks very much to Ronan McNally for coming on. Um, and obviously, sponsoring the charity bet. Uh, thank you to Dean for taking an hour out of his time and Ronan as well for that as well. But um, I think that's basically it. We'll be back again for the 27th with, I suppose, more insight into the... Christmas racing festivals and hopefully plenty more winners along the way. I've been Shane Rooney. Thanks very much. Yeah. Dean and Ronan, thanks very much for coming on.
Anyways, thank thanks, you. Chen. Thank you. I'll just.